Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about what caused this on my printer to print like this when I really wanted it to print like this. So how did I get it to go from one to the other? Okay, watch in and find out. Okay, so I've been having all sorts of problems with my Cobra Max, uh, Anycubic Cobra Max, not printing properly. I made a few changes to it and I thought I had it all right. And then I did a temperature tower to try and get the right temperature for the print. And it turned out like this. Hang on, I'll get it on a better, better setting for you. Uh, there we go. So it turned out like this. You can see that. It's shocking. Yeah, and it even did a, um, a layer shift here because the print head was getting caught on this and so much um, filament there and the, the blobs of filament and it's terrible. What it's meant to look like is something like this. So as it goes up in temperature, it changes the print quality. And you can see probably the best one is this one here. So that's the sort of t temperature I want my print at. And that is uh, 205. Just got the temperatures at the side there. So, so what did I do? First of all, I thought the filament was crap because it, was, it looks like it's blobbing and everything. And then I thought, nah, that's not filament. That, that looks like there's way too much filament there. So I had to find out and test my E-steps. Now, E-steps is what um, basically telling your extruder how much filament to push out. Okay, so... This was pushing out way too much filament and causing all sorts of problems. So the way to do it is to load on a program called Pronterface. Um, and I'll just show you, let's get into the website here. So if you go to the website, it's called pronterface.com. I'll put a link in the bottom um, for you to follow. So once you go there, if you click on the download tab over here, it'll basically just scroll down the page and get you to where they download it. And you'll see there's a latest release there. So if you click on that, it will then pump you into GitHub, which is where a lot of um, um, people hold all their programs and stuff, yeah? So if you scroll to where it's meant to be, it'll say Print Run. That's the name of the company, but it will load Pronterface for you. So you find the I Need Windows, click on that, it'll start to download the Windows version. Now what it's downloading is one file called pronterface.exe and that doesn't load you don't need to load it so once it downloads you just execute the file and it will open up it's all contained in that one executable file so you can either transport around on USB if you need to so once you've downloaded it and run it you'll get a program that looks like this okay so what have we got on that program we have um, it's got your COM up here, so that's the port that it's plugged into. Most of the time, it will default to the one that you're plugged into. But I've got three I can, three I can choose from. Why isn't it coming up there? Oh, it's going down. Hang on. Let me just... Not sure what's going on there. Anyway, I've got three that come up when I do it. It's uh, I've got three, four, and five. COM5 is my one. Now, you can just keep trying it until you get the one that works, but... Oh, mine's COM5 and it's um, 115,200 bit, bit, uh, bits per second it is the rate. Now once you've got that, you push on the connect. And if it works okay, over on the side here, it will say printer is now online. Once it's online, so all I'm doing here is finding, I need to find my current E-step. So my current rate, the extruder is pushing out filament. So once you are online, you can issue the command. Not, all of this is in some instructions I'll show you in a minute. But if you issue the command M503, quite easy, that's all you need to type. And it'll scroll through and give you all these values on the side here. What you're looking for is right up top where it says, and where 
where is it? The M92 command here. So that command there, at the very end, it's got your E. And mine there says 390. And that is your stepper rate. So it's 390 is your stepper rate for your printer. Okay. So how do I change that? So what you need to do, for one, you need to find out how much extra it's pushing out. So what you do from there is you get a measuring rule. I usually use a set of calipers. Um, hang on. I got it set off eBay. They're not ex not that expensive. They're just like this. The little electronic one. If they mine's running out of battery, so I've been using it manually. So basically, it's just a ruler. And the ruler from there to there, and you can just measure. So you measure out. I measure out 100 and 120, and I mark it on the filament. And you do that from where it's entering into your extruder, and you take it back, and you mark 100 and 120 with a, a permanent marker. Then you extrude 100 um, millimeters of filament out of your extruder. Now, how do you go about doing that? Okay, so the easiest way to do it is to probably is to run a command, get back to it oh, right, which is this, G1, E100, F100, and that will push out what it thinks is 100 millimetres of filament. Now, once it's finished printing or pushing the filament out, you'll then measure, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it'll finish on the first mark at 100. If it doesn't, and it goes over that, then what's left between the 120 and the, the start of the extruder, so it shouldn't go past 120. One would hope not. Okay, so if it's gone like 105, it'll be 15 left at the end. If it's gone 110, it'll be 10 left. Okay, so you need to find out how much is extruded out. Once you've done that, there is a great little program online called ah, the E-Step Calculator. And let me just find it. It is this guy here. So I'll also put a link down below. So basically all you need to do in this is come in and say, what is your current E-Step? Well, it's 350. So I put in 350. And I come in and say, well, it actually extruded 105. And that is the new E-Step value that we need to put in. Okay, so basically it's saying, I pushed out 5 mil too much filament. If I pushed out like too little, and it pushed out like 95, it'll give me a different figure there. Okay, so whatever that figure is there, we need to put back into our our printer to tell it this is the rate you need to be pushing filament out. So we go back into Prontoface and we come down the, to the command line. And in the command line, we type M92. And if you can't remember any of the commands on that website I showed you, it actually tells you the commands to type in, as you can see. So up the top, it'll tell you 503. And then use 92, if it look for the 92 with the E, then it says this is how you get 100 mil. Then it comes down to the very bottom and says, you must enter the new value. So you do that by entering M92, then an E, like it says there, and then the new value that you've just worked out in the calculator, which is 386.42 on this one. Okay, and once you've done that, you've got to save it, which is an M500. So I would come in here, here, Type in M92, M92, space E348, oh, 68.42, sorry, 68.42, and 
and then I'd hit send. <laughs> I'm not going to do it because it'll crap my printer up. And once you've done that, it resets the value of the extruder, so it'll push out the right amount, hopefully. And then once you hit send to that, it'll say, yeah, it's sent. And then you do an M500. Like so, M500. Why isn't that doing it? Oh. Okay. M500. Like so, and push send, and that will save the figuration. Now, what you need to do once you've done that is repeat the process again and make sure that it's printing to 100. So, so measure out your 100 and your 120. You measure out both in case it goes over, then you've got a thing, a, a mark there to measure to your extruder. That, that's why you measure two marks. Okay? Now, once you've got it printing right, you probably want to print a temperature tower. Now, the temperature towers are done really easy in, in um, Ultimaker, Ultimaker Cura. And if you haven't done it, there'll be a link down below for the Cura, if you don't have Cura. Um, i sort of starting to move over to Orca Slicer, which is I think is um, really good. It's a, it's a combination of the Prusa Slicer and the Bamboo Slicer, and it's um, sort of making the rounds nowadays, but I still use Cura to print temperature towers because it's really easy to do. Now, if you've got a stock standard version of Cura, and I'll just get into it, so if you've got a stock standard version of Cura, it won't have the temperature towers loaded. So if you have a look in the extensions here, it doesn't have anything. So what you need to do is load it from the marketplace. So if you go in the marketplace over the corner here, Okay, so it'll come up like this, and you'll see that it's got the auto tower generator. You might have to scroll up and down to see it, but once you've clicked on it, and then you just go install, and that'll install it for you. And once it's installed, accept, and then we can go, and then we can go in. Oh, you've got to restart Cura. Okay, well, let's restart Cura. I really want to do that. Okay, so now we should have auto towers. And if you go down, you'll see that you can do temperature towers, retraction towers. You can do all sorts of different towers to tune in your machine. Okay, so these will do retraction, so how far it should retract and... and um, when it's doing layer changes and stuff, so then you don't get as much stringing and all that sort of stuff. You have a speed tower to see what's the best speed to run your printer at. But the temperature tower is the one I use, and um, PLA or PLA Plus or TPU, PETG, all the, all the common ones are there. But once you do it, it will create a temperature tower and it will automatically change all the temperatures for you. You don't need to do anything else. Print whatever printer you've got from your printer list. Yeah, I've got all those printers. Yeah. <laughs> um, so pick whatever printer, and it will slice it away for you. And once it's sliced it, then you can send it to the printer or save it to a USB stick and print it away. So what I got from doing it was a mess where I couldn't print to um, something like this where it's printing um, some really nice pictures. And they're nice crisp lines now. Where if you saw the temperature at the start, it was really, but the whole print was like that. When it was printing, it was just printing crap. And all it was was the, I had a few problems with the print head, which I fixed up, but then it still printed crap. And I'm thinking, what the hell's going on? Then I realized the um, it was extruding too much. And now it's printing fine. Now, what I'm doing here, in case you're wondering, is I'm building some shelving for myself. So I'll just get back into the right thing. So what I'm doing is building a shelf like this. So that's how it's come out. It's come out nice and crisp. And basically, it's going to fit little baskets in it. Whoops, that way. Right, right. You see? 
It's going to fill a whole shelf load, so I'm going to have two on each side, some plywood in between them, and it's just the perfect size. Now, what I did is I found this on Thingiverse. I then pulled it into Tinkercad, and I cut a whole heap. <laughs> it was about this thick, and it's thick all around. It was way too thick for what I needed it for, and it was a lot smaller. It was really small ones. So I pulled it into Tinkercad and resized it all and resized it specifically for, and Tinkercad's really is. I'm going to do a, a, um, a video about how to do certain sort of just basic changes to STLs in Tinkercad. It's really easy. Um, you can do it in Fusion 360 if you view, but I find Tinkercad's really easy for just the basic stuff where you just need to change sizes and stuff. It's really sort of quite good for that sort of thing. Um, but anyway, so that's what I did. I all all it was was just um, changing the um, extruder value for the E steps inside um, inside your printer. So I hope that helped, guys. Um, stay tuned. I should be getting my K1 Max next week uh, in the next, well, probably next two or three days. Um, so I'll be doing one on that, and I'll be doing some some videos on on the K1 Max as well. So um, please, if you've liked what you've seen, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. It costs you nothing to subscribe and it would be really helpful. Okay, guys, thank you. Bye.